Hello, and welcome to our weekly study in the book of Mark. Uh, Tonight, we're asking a brief, but I think very interesting question um, at the tail end of our passage from this past Sunday, uh, looking at Mark chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Let me read those two verses and then ask you this question. Verse number 12, And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Um, My question for you tonight as we think about the 12 disciples who were sent out by the Lord Jesus Christ, they did all these miraculous things as they went out and spread his message. They cast out devils, they healed the sick. So my question for you tonight is why don't we see the same power over demonic forces amongst Jesus' followers today? Why do we not see these kind of amazing, miraculous events, okay? Let's quickly go through some things, and then I think we'll have plenty of room for discussion uh, on this uh, question here. Number one, these are the 12 apostles. Actually, when you see in this passage here, Mark 6, Jesus sent them out. That's where we get our word apostles from. Uh, These were apostles that had a very specific calling, and that calling included uh, power over demons. Jesus specifically in our passage here in Mark 6 gives them power over demons. That, that was a calling for the 12 and not necessarily for you and for me. I'm grateful God has a calling for all of us, but that calling is not the same for all believers. In Ephesians 4.11 it says this, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And so he calls people to specific works, and today we don't have the office of apostle, right? That was a specific calling for those that were sent out uh, with personal knowledge, having been with the Lord Jesus Christ, included the 12, and then the apostle Paul called later on the road to Damascus. And so these were men that had a specific calling. Second thing I think should enter into our conversation and our thoughts is that, uh, yes, these apostles were casting demons out that had a very obvious um, 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 work and power in the lives of people, like the man that we see in Mark chapter 5, where Jesus cast a legion of demons out of them. But I want us to remember that much of the devil's work is very, shall we say, ordinary, right? It's not always so flashy or exhibiting itself in our maybe idea of demonic possession. Um, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen and 15 describes Satan as transforming himself into an angel of light and representing himself as a minister of righteousness at times. Um, Satan is described in Ephesians 2 as the prince of the power of the air, Uh, So he works here in this world. He is active. He will be active until Christ returns and crushes him. Uh, But what is that work like? Well, sometimes it's like the man we see in Mark 5 or the people that the disciples cast demons out of in Mark chapter 6. But many times it is much more mundane, as we mentioned. Uh, Satan, as the prince of the power of the air, does everything he can to resist God and resist God's work. And as the one who uh, has so much sway over so many people, um, Ephesians 2, 2 again says, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What is this world system that Satan is active in as the prince of the power of the air. Well, 1 John 2, in verses 15 through 17, describe it this way. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. How does this um, devil work so often? Well, he works in the ordinary things that resist God, things that appeal to our eyes, our flesh, and the pride of life. This idea that we can live apart from God and we can live selfishly. That's oftentimes where we see the devil uh, do the most work that he does is in our selfishness and the way that we resist God's 
work. All right, so first of all, again, the apostles had a specific calling. Secondly, though, as we start to think about it, much of the devil's work is ordinary. And so, disciples today, yes, they fight against principalities and powers, but it may not look the way that you and I um, would think it would look, and it may not look as fantastic or as um, um, amazing as what we think of when we read a place like Mark chapter 6. So the question that we've asked is, why don't we see the amazing power over demonic forces that the 12 disciples did? And I would say believers do see that, but you need to know where to look, right? So we see in this passage, Jesus sends out his disciples. And so the 12 were prepared by Jesus, commissioned by Jesus, and given power and authority by Jesus to do the Lord's work then. I would say that's a preview. That's something that helps us to understand that Jesus does the same today, but it may not look exactly the same. And so the 12 were prepared by Jesus to do the Lord's work then, and believers are prepared by Jesus to do the Lord's work today. I'm always fascinated by the, the passage in Ephesians 6 where Paul says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wow, that seems amazing. That seems like what we read about in Mark chapter 6. But what's the context? The context is marriage is hard. We need God's help, and, and that's a spiritual fight. Being a parent is, is, is hard work, and, and we wrestle against selfishness like we read about in first john chapter two uh it, it's it's hard to be a child and obey your parents right that's that's tough work and and it's a spiritual battle it's a battle where we resist the devil's work in the world system it's hard to balance um work relationships and 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 to be the kind of employer we ought to be and and, and there's all things to consider there how do we do what we ought to do well, by putting on the armor of God, by the Holy Spirit's indwelling in us, and Christ has equipped us and prepared us to do that work and to resist the devil. And so don't discount his work in you. It's easy to read a passage like Mark 6 and think, wow, I would have loved to have had that kind of power given by the Lord and that kind of mission. Well, that was for the apostles, right? And I'm not saying the Lord can't equip us to do the kind of work that the apostles did. Uh, if he chooses to do that, I won't put that out of his hands. He can do whatever he desires. But the norm for believers today is to resist principalities and powers by doing that, that normal, everyday, um, what we think of kind of as mundane work, but really is a miracle because God is working in us. So don't discount his work in you. And if that's the case, if if to have a good marriage is a spiritual battle and to be a good parent is a spiritual battle and to be uh, the child I ought to be in, in all my relationships to follow God, if that's a spiritual battle, then I've got to depend upon him just as the 12 disciples did in Mark chapter 6. So let me encourage you. There's a fight ahead of you. Let's just wake up to it, right? And realize we have the same Lord who equipped his disciples to do the work then he equips his disciples to do the work today. Well, I'm interested to see how the discussion goes. Do you consider your day-to-day -day life as a believer to be this kind of spiritual battle? Should we take things that seriously? <laughs> um, am, am I crazy to think that there's a comparison? Um, are we um, jealous of the disciples for, for no reason? Uh, what, what, what do you think? And um, I'm curious to see how the Lord leads in that conversation. Uh, God bless you. If we can pray for you in any way, leave us a comment, uh, send us a message. We'd love to do so. Love to get into the trenches with you and uh, uh, participate uh, with you as you seek to follow the Lord. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next time as we study through the book of Mark.